Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the HP Envy X360 15. This is a 15 inch two in one that works as a laptop, but also can get folded down into a tablet configuration. And of course it has a touch display so you can interact with the computer when the keyboard is tucked away. This is a relatively affordable laptop. It actually starts at a pretty reasonable price. And of course there are ways you can configure it to more expensive options but we're looking at kind of the mid-range one today. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this HP laptop is all about. Now, the price point on this starts at $649 and goes up from there. The model we're looking at today is currently selling on Best Buy for $899. Now this review loaner has a Ryzen 7 5825U processor on board. The entry level model has a 5625U. So this will do a little better on computationally intensive tasks, but graphically the lower end model will perform very close to this one for games and that sort of thing. So you will get a slightly better uh, performance experience out of the mid range unit, but the entry level one isn't too shabby. Now this has 12 gigabytes of RAM on board, at least in the configuration that we have here. This is configured in dual channel mode, although you don't get the full extent of the RAM as dual channels. So the first eight gigabytes will run at really decent performance, but if you have applications that need more than that, you might see some performance drop-offs as it goes to single channel mode. The good news is the RAM is upgradable so you can swap out those modules and get them paired up. There are two RAM slots inside. You can also upgrade the solid state drive on board. This one at the mid-range ships with a 512 gigabyte SSD that's very easy to swap out. And HP has a video that you're seeing right now rolling over me uh, that can guide you through the process of swapping out components. Now the review loaner we have here has the lowest end display available. This one is 1080p with 250 nits of brightness. I'm not gonna recommend the low-end display for creative professionals because the color accuracy isn't all that great, but for people doing basic tasks and basic video editing and that sort of thing, it's fine. But if you are looking for accurate color, you will need to spend a little bit more on a better display option. Now they have another display that also runs at 1080p that can go up to 400 nits of brightness and has better color accuracy. There's also an OLED version that's also 400 nits, so about twice the brightness here of the low-end display that has even more color options. And there's also a 1440p option that can run at 120 hertz at 300 nits. But the base model here has a 60 hertz 250 nit display at 1080p. It looks fine, uh, but just know that there are better options available on some of the higher end units in the line. And all of the display options are running at a 16 by nine aspect ratio. We're starting to see now more laptops with taller 16 by 10 displays, but it looks like this whole line is sticking to 16 by nine. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, it will vary based on the display option that you choose. So the base level display here is probably gonna get the best battery life. And in our testing, we're looking at about nine or 10 hours if you keep the display brightness down and stick to basic tasks like web browsing and email and word processing, which is very good actually for a laptop of this size. So I was very pleased with the battery life, but if you went with the high-end OLED display, you'll see far less. Now the quality of the webcam is very nice on this. I was able to record that clip at 1440p at 30 frames per second. It is a five megapixel webcam. So you're gonna look pretty good on your Zoom calls without having to attach an external one. There is also a shutter on here that you enable with a key press and that will cover up the lens physically along with disabling it electrically as you can see here. And that uh, shutter will block the webcam so uh, you have some added privacy there. Now you have a nice big roomy keyboard here because this is a 15 inch laptop so you've got plenty of real estate to work with. The keys are nicely spaced, they're pretty large, very easy to type on. The keyboard is backlit as you can see and there's a good amount of key travel as well. So when you're typing you've got a good amount of tactile feedback. So I found it to be a very nice typing keyboard. You'll notice though that even though this is a 15 inch laptop it does not have a full size number pad like many of these 15 inch laptops have, but the keys are centered nicely here above the trackpad. The speakers are actually on the bottom here and you've got 
uh, stereo speakers left and right. They actually sound pretty good. And of course, the sound's going to vary based on how the computer is sitting. So in its laptop configuration here, it is downward firing. But when you flip the screen around, they will be upward firing speakers. They sound pretty good. Uh, you know, good amount of bass to them. They're not too boomy, uh, but you do get a sound that doesn't sound all that tinny either. So all in decent audio quality for a laptop speaker set. But of course, you'll have better quality audio by plugging in headphones, either with a wire or over Bluetooth. You also have a nice trackpad here. It is a little spongier than I would typically like, but I found it tracks very accurately and it feels uh, pretty functional. So overall, the trackpad is good. The keyboard is better. Now this lacks a fingerprint reader, but you can log in with facial recognition using the webcam. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you got a full-size USB 3 port here on the left-hand side, a headphone microphone jack over here, along with a full-size SD card reader. And the SD card will sit fully inside the card slot here, so you can walk around with the card without having it stick out on you there. On the other side, you've got another USB 3 port along with an HDMI output and two USB Type-C ports that are 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Note, though, that this is not the newer USB 4 standard, and this is not Thunderbolt on the Ryzen version, which is the one we have here. There is an Intel version available that has these two ports operating as Thunderbolt ports, so you'll get a little more uh, performance out of those ports on the Intel side, but for USB devices, this should be just fine. Additionally, the laptop is powered through those USB Type-C ports. You can plug your power into either one of them, so you will have to have a port occupied when the laptop is plugged in. But of course, you could use a USB Type-C docking station to make use of some of the other features of the ports. And these ports will also allow you to output display too. Now, the build quality on this feels very nice. It is mostly made out of aluminum, so it's got a nice premium feel to it. You do, though, need to hold down the keyboard deck when you lift up the display. Otherwise, the keyboard comes with it and that is partly due to how tight the hinges are here. But beyond that, it has a pretty nice premium feel overall. It weighs four pounds, two ounces, or about 1.9 kilograms. So it is on the heavier side, but that is something we typically see with these 15-inch laptops. They typically weigh a little bit more than smaller ones do. All right, let's take a look now and see how this performs. We'll begin with a little web browsing here by going over to the nasa.gov homepage. And we are running, of course, with my Wi-Fi 6 access point here at the house, and we have Wi-Fi 6 on board the laptop. And as you can see here, things like web browsing are very fast and responsive. That is something we would expect out of a modern Ryzen processor here. And overall, I think for doing basic types of work, this is going to do just fine. Now, we also tried some YouTube video running at 60 frames per second at a 1080p resolution. We had one drop frame when it got started, but otherwise the laptop was able to keep up with that. So I think you'll have a good experience with Netflix and the other video streaming services out there. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 240. And this is right on par with current generation Intel processors along with another Ryzen 5800 device that we looked at a few months back. Now you can also do some light video editing on this device. We've got DaVinci Resolve here running and I just dropped in a transition on a 4K60 project. As you can see, it was able to do that transition in real time here without any lag or slowdown. We can change that transition to something else. And as you can see, it is keeping up quite nicely with that. And that's thanks to the video hardware that's built into these Ryzen chips. It is very good, not only for playing some games every once in a while, but doing some of these tasks as well. Now they do offer a version of this laptop with an NVIDIA GPU, which is a separate processor for graphics. That of course will do a lot better for higher end tasks, but if you're doing kind of the stuff that I do here on YouTube, this is gonna work just fine as you can see, and you should be able to edit your videos without a lot of things getting in the way of that. So let's take a look at some games running on the laptop now. These Ryzen chips do quite well at that. And the sweet spot, I think, for a lot of higher-end titles is going to be a 720p resolution in the settings for those games. So this is Red Dead Redemption 2 running at 720p, lowest settings. 
and we were getting between 30 and 35 frames per second. It was quite playable, as you can see here, even in areas where it is rendering buildings and other things. So you'll have a good gaming experience, again, with the resolution turned down a bit. Now, we did run Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p lowest settings, but there we were only getting about 20 frames per second. It was much more playable at 720p. Another game we ran at 720p is No Man's Sky, also very playable here, coming in at around 30 to 35 frames per second. The 1080p experience was very similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, which was around 20 or so. And as you can see here, the game looks pretty good even at its lowest settings. We also did one more, Doom Eternal for good measure, and this one was running at 1080p lowest settings. This game runs really fast on lower end hardware. So here we were able to get a playable frame rate of about 45 to 50 frames per second at 1080p. So depending on the game, you'll have varying degrees of performance, but it is nice to be able to run some current games at decent frame rates on hardware that doesn't cost all that much money. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,323. That puts this one right within the margin of error of a 5800U-based Ryzen device from Lenovo that we looked at a few weeks ago. You can also see, though, at the top of the list is the next generation Ryzen chips, the 6000 series. The graphics performance is much better on those new chips, which are starting to make their way out into the marketplace right now. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99.4%. That test indicates that the computer will maintain its performance even under a heavy sustain load, which is very nice to see. Additionally, the fan noise is not that loud on this one, surprisingly. So the fan intake is here at the bottom and it will exhaust out the back. You wanna keep the bottom clear for the best performance, but the fan really is not very distracting even when that benchmark is running and it's making use of all of the computer's potential. So I think you will uh, not hear the fan all that often when you're sitting idle or doing some basic work on it. And when that fan does come on, it's not all that distracting. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux compatibility. We did boot up the most recent version of Ubuntu on a live stream the other day, and most of the system was detected properly. The one thing that did not work for us was audio. So that's one area that you'll have to spend a little bit more time getting up and running, but everything else ran fine and the performance on Ubuntu felt pretty good to me. So overall, this is a pretty good laptop for its price point, especially for the entry level model. You can upgrade the memory and storage later if you want to do that. It feels pretty well built, the performance is there and it's got great battery life too. So altogether, not much to complain about on this entry from HP. That is gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.